Hey people, welcome to the Photo Mama podcast. Conversations on all things motherhood, photography, and life. I'm Ikoja Mercy Haruna, but you can call me Mercy. I'm a photographer and a mom of two beautiful babies. And I'm Elsie Kifuengare. I'm also a photographer and a mom of two. We're finally doing this, Elsie. I mean, oh, it feels amazing. <laughs> yes, it's been a long time coming. We, yes, we are finally doing this. Like, yeah. gosh. Go us. Wow. Uh, as, yeah. as we shared on the trailer, Photo Mama Podcast is a space to have conversations about navigating photography and motherhood. In today's episode, I'm hoping like you, the audience, get to know a little bit about us and why we are doing this podcast. So this will be an informal conversation. So please stick around and yeah, I hope we get to enjoy this episode. Yep. So let's get into it. So Marcy, how did you start photography first and foremost? Was it before the kids or after the kids? <laughs> Which one was it? <laughs> <laughs> it was it was definitely before the kids. So um, my first encounter with photography was in high school which feels like years and years ago now, um, I took a, a class, a darkroom class. So I learned to photograph, process and print um, black and white film, which I enjoyed immensely. But being from an African home, I didn't consider photography seriously until um, my first year in uni when I took another um, photography class, this time digital and realized wow i really really enjoy um i enjoy photography um before that i was such a theater performing arts person right from when i was little so this was it was new to me to to go into the visual arts but i really really enjoyed photography as as a way to get Mm -hmm. more visual and um yeah that was it I went home to my mom and I said look I think I really want to study photography actually before that I spoke to my my tutor and asked her because she was a working photographer I asked her I'm like do you think I could study photography and she said yeah yeah I, I think you can yeah <laughs> and you know we talked about it and she gave me a few pointers then I went home and I said to my mom I would really like to study photography and, you know, my mom, she's used to my antiques, you know, by now. She's 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 not your typical African parent that would have been like, oh, go go and study medicine and or go go be an engineer or, you know, what's the other one? Lawyer. Like all, all African kids. <laughs> Lawyer. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> she she just bought me a camera and she was like, well, you know, go ahead. If, if you're going to study photography, you're going to do it to the highest level. Right. So I ended up doing my BA in visual communication with a focus on photography. And then when I finished with that, I did my MA in photography. So that was sort of like the beginnings of my photography. Um, but then after that, I became a mom. I didn't, I didn't even let myself breathe or start a career or anything. As soon as I was finishing my master's, I became a mom. And um, from then on, my children would inspire my photography. And that's why a lot of my work right now is focused on motherhood and family stories and capturing the fleeting moments, but also diving deeper into deeper conversations around motherhood and all the realities and complexities of our lives. Yeah, so yeah, that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> what about you, um, Elsie? How did you get started? Wow, listening to your story, I <laughs> listening to your story, I kind of resonate but my earliest relationship with photography is when uh, i can't remember age but it was before i think i was still in primary because my mom had a camera and i used to like like photographs at around the home just playing around with the camera <laughs> which she wasn't too happy about because developing film is not was not cheap then and it's not cheap now anyway <laughs> so <laughs> but looking back at those photographs i'm glad that i did it because we used to play with the camera together with my brother and that's just like fleet like again fleeting moments around the home and stuff like that um and then seeing a drawer full of photographs in my mom's room and i was so intrigued and i'm like why are they not in albums they're just loose pages of all these photographs but i could see my photographs of when i was a baby and all this and then growing up you know so that's my first introduction to photography and then it kind of like faded away 
and then I started going into high school. I'm not very artistic, but I really was interested in the arts. But I wanted to join an art um, subject, but I was I was told no, <laughs> I can't do anything like that. I was like, oh my god! Who told you no? <laughs> of course, the teachers. Who else? <laughs> um, but I was al- always interested in making visual create things visually that you can see visually and I was interested in like things like advertising and all that so I decided to s- look into that world the advertising world and then graphic design came about because I, w- I was always like flipping through magazines and wondering how do they lay out all the images and text together because that's what graphic design is so when I came into the UK I started doing short courses on like graphic design and all this and like oh my god suckling back and when I was in Kenya I did a secretarial course and in it <laughs> there was uh, desktop publishing that's the old term of like illustrator <laughs> graphic design <laughs> and all that it was part of oh, a secretarial course so I enjoyed that bit apart from the other shorthand things which here I'm telling my age, but you know what? It doesn't matter. Shorthand. <laughs> Short oh my hand. God. <laughs> I remember uh, that. Cause, yeah, because after high school, there was no way I was going to be staying home and then doing nothing. So my mom enrolled me into a secretarial course. And yeah, um, but I enjoyed that back part of being a creative. That part of the course really intrigued me and also typing, the typing section, because I knew this was the future, even though we were using those old typewriters with ribbons and rolling the paper. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, but coming back to the computer side, I knew the typing course helped me with my keyboard skills. So those are skills that I, I'm still using today. But anyway, uh, moving fast forward to coming to the UK doing all these short courses in graphic design, web design. It was the graphic design course. There was a module in there that had photography, which I really, really loved. And I was like, oh, I could actually do this. Because I already started buying my own cameras. I just walked into a supermarket, bought a cheap camera for film. Because I needed to document my life in the UK anyway. So Mm -hmm. I bought my first camera. I can't remember the name. It was a cheap one from supermarket. (laughs) I was taking pictures. And then later on, I said, I bought another one. The technology at the time was uh, APS film. The one you just drop into the camera and it rolls itself. That technology Mm -hmm. became obsolete so fast. But I love the fact that when you go to develop the film, they gave you a free (laughs) roll. So I didn't spend... Right. The only money I was spending is for developing, not for buying film. That was back then. And then I invested in digital, a digital camera, a small point and shoot. Later on, a DSLR, which I still have, my first DSLR camera. And I was like, I really need to do this professionally. How do I go about doing this right. professionally? <laughs> um, so I was looking at... Um, doing a course like in college or university and all this jazz and i was like you know what let me just go to uni let me just start from the basics so i just went straight and did a ba no foundation nothing oh wow <laughs> but I just went for, yeah i just went for an open day but i entered and when i went for the open day, i was so confused i was like I don't know what to do. Should I do a part-time course? Because at the time I was working. Or should I mm-hmm. quit my job and do full-time? And one of the lecturers saw me looking also confused. She's just like, come with me. <laughs> and then she took me to the part-time section of the open day. And when I sat there and I saw and explained the course structure and why it takes a year longer than the other one, I was like, you know what? This might just work. So I ended up like registering for my BA course at the time. This was in 2012. And um, yeah, I extended that course anyway a year later. So I ended up doing it for five years because oh, motherhood wow. yes, at the time. Yes, we can talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> so by the time I was starting the course, my firstborn was two in 2012. Yeah. So my firstborn was two. I was like, that, that time... It was a good time because I knew he was going to go to nursery. I didn't have to juggle so much with him. And I was still working at the time, hence the part-time choice of the course. So you can imagine I'm juggling that and motherhood, work, da-da-da. 
going to uni and then when i was finishing my second year in summer whatever i became pregnant <sighs> my timeline and baby brain i'm still sticking to that story because <laughs> <laughs> i knew by the time i gave birth i'll be starting my third year of uni so and i didn't want to take time off because i knew if i stop now and i'm in my ba in the halfway point i will never go back to finish yeah so i just what i did i gave up my job so i gave up my job and focused on being a mom and being a student and that's how i managed to do that and managed to finish my ba and hence the extension <laughs> for one year <laughs> okay so i finished the degree as in the what is it called the final uh, final major project the exhibition yeah. i did it with my cohort and i knew my dissertation i i was going to do it by myself so that was the extension for the one year i did my dissertation and then i took a break i think mm-hmm. one year or two year break <laughs> i can't remember i decided you know what i have this itch i need to scratch let mm-hmm. me do a ba and yeah um i went back and did my ba again not full time the whole one year cuz it's stressful so i did a part time thank god the uni i went to had a part time option so i did one for two years oh wait 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 sorry i'm confused you did a ba you finished your dissertation and you went back again and did a ba no or do you mean ma ma okay okay yeah okay. I was an ma sorry yeah. <laughs> if i I'm said sorry. ba <laughs> yeah you did it was an, an ma <laughs> Uh yeah, I did a masters in photography and again I took the part-time path. So and this the direction was different so I could decide which modules I could do in the first year and then which modules I could do in the second year so as to pace myself. <sighs> yeah, and it so happened when I was doing my final year, it happened during the pandemic, which yeah. added to more stress. Oh my god. That was uh that was very stressful but you know what i'm glad that i again i did want to defer mm-hmm. i was like if i defer here i will not finish this coming course. back <laughs> yeah, yeah. S- speaking of deferring i had to defer as well at the end of my ma because i i got pregnant sort of halfway and i had um hyperemesis gravidarum which is like severe vomiting and sickness in pregnancy so even even getting out of bed was so difficult mm. so i i i deferred and i had to go back to finish the following year when when my son was 5 months and oh my goodness it was the most challenging thing he was he was breastfed so didn't want to take the bottle mm. i would leave some express milk and i would get back hours later and he hasn't taken any of it and i can remember how stressful that was trying to finish my project breastfeeding and just sometimes i feel like i i i blocked it out or something because mm. i just had to power through do my final exhibition and there are moments now when i look back at the work and i'm like this is not my finest work but i'm proud of myself mm. because i pushed through and i fit, i came back i even when my when my baby was young i took him with me to some some supervised supervisions because mm. there was nothing else i could do leaving living in my home meant, meant he was hungry and i couldn't be at peace wherever i was so i would bring him with me and thankfully my my supervisor was really nice he would carry him while i'm doing presentations and you know yeah. i would put him in my um baby carrier and you see me walking around campus with my baby and yeah. it was such it was a, an interesting time but i'm glad that i pushed myself through and i know you can relate just pushing yourself through um everything and whether or not i got a merit or whatever i don't care <laughs> the fact is that i finished <laughs> i finished what i started <laughs> and honestly that's how i felt especially with the ma i was like i am not deferring i am not that was yes. my mantra through all my personal tutorials and i was just sitting through my personal tutorials like i don't know i was like a zombie i was literally mentally exhausted but I was yeah. like I am not deferring this course. I am finishing even if I'm going to submit one photo for my FMP. I don't it, care. It I just want to finish. <laughs> yeah, there, because there's just something about starting and finishing yeah. which is something that is like is a recurring theme I found when it comes to juggling motherhood is I have all these great ideas. 
but starting them and finishing them is so so difficult because i'm juggling so much and i'm sure mm. a lot of people will relate to this so when i do get to the end of something i f- i pat myself on the back no matter how chaotic <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it is finishing executing and and coming to the end of any oh, project is man. such a massive deal with when you have to juggle motherhood as well that's so true if you said something about taking your child to uni during your supervised uh, um tutorials and everything with yes. your lecturers it just reminded me of an incident uh, an incident that happened when i was like breastfeeding but i i thankfully I didn't get to take my kids to school at any one point Um, because by the time I was going back, uh, my youngest was already at the stage where they were eating, they were weaning, right? But I was still breastfeeding because I had a difficult time with the first one with breastfeeding. With the second one, I was so determined to push for as long as I could. Mm -hmm. So this one time I'm in uni and my breasts were full. I was like, oh no. and I was like, I really need to pump. So I'm going <laughs> everywhere around campus. I'm like, is there a room I can go to so I can pump? I go to the security guard. They're like, go to the toilets. I'm like, huh? Oh Do you my eat God. in the toilets? I go to the, I go to, I don't know where I went. I think I went to, because I remember in the dark rooms, there's cubicles. I even reached that point, I was going to the technicians of the dark rooms and asking them, can I just go into the rooms and then pump? They were like, no, you can't do that, chemicals, and which I could understand that bit. But I needed somewhere private to do it. Right. I could not, for the life of me in campus, I could not find anywhere where I could go, like a private room and just pump. That's incredible. Because the suggestion of the toilet was like, no. I, nah, I, you don't need to That's the food. That's baby food. Yes. Why would I do that? So in my head, I was like, oh, by the way, there's a nurse's office. So that's what I went and did. I went to the medical section of the hospital, the nurse's office. But the nurse was not there that day. So the office was mm-hmm. closed, but it, the reception area was open. So I was like, you know what? I can't deal. I just sat there. I don't know what I did. I, <laughs> I think I covered myself or whatever, but I ended up pumping. Thank God there was a, pl- a plug there and I ended up pumping. But it got me thinking... If there are any like institutions, universities, colleges out there listening to this, please allocate. Some of us are moms. We, we I know, I know some are younger, but yeah. I was a mature student. So if there's a mom who's pregnant or whatever, have a section in your buildings somewhere. They can go and do these things. I mean, you have prayer rooms. Where are there not, you know, provisions for like moms to go and pump or even when they come with their kids to go and breastfeed, you know, if they're feeling like a little bit shy and they just want somewhere secluded. I mean, to breastfeed, it's, yeah. It's not too much to ask, you know, so. It's not too much to ask, absolutely. Absolutely. But I think it takes us having conversations like this to highlight them because it, when I was a, a younger student studying, that's not something that would have ever crossed my mind, you know, but having gone through as a, <laughs> well, was I a mature student? Whatever. I was a student that, that was a parent. So um, then I, that's when I could relate with things like this. So it takes us having these kinds of conversations to bring those things to, to light. Because otherwise, I think maybe a lot of people don't even think about that. That a mom could no. be coming back to study and having to pump or bring her baby. Exactly. Or change a nappy. Oh, gosh, yeah. You know, like you the know? nappy changing tables and stuff. That was a thing as well, you know. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> we could talk endlessly about all the challenges. Um, we're juggling these two worlds, but... Yeah, I think this 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 episode was stretch way longer than we <laughs> intended it to. But I guess this is why we started the podcast because we wanted to have to bring these conversations into the forefront being like photographers and we are moms because we are always having these conversations with other moms in various communities, you know, always discussing why they're struggling or why they're trying to juggle between photography and motherhood. And as we mentioned, like you're always trying to pick, am I going to take this job uh, today and then my child is suffering or am I not going to take it And because I don't have childcare? And, you know, these battles we are constantly having, I mean, it's... Gosh, this just... This just reminded me of um, my earliest photo shoots I used to do because when when I then had my son, I then decided to start um, a family photography business. And in my 
some of my earlier shoots, I would have him on my back and I would, you know, be on a photo session just because he was so clingy to me. He was so attached to me that I couldn't work knowing that he's at home crying. So it meant that sometimes I would bring him with me because then I, he would be with me. I'd feel okay to do work and because because I knew that he was with me, he's taking care of, he's not crying, you know, all of that. It's things like that that I I never thought about. I always wanted to be a mom, by the way. And I remember in my final year of uni, in one of the modules, business practices modules, they asked us to write a um, business plan. And I had this, all these grand ideas about studios and galleries and traveling and, but nowhere in that did I say, oh, and I know I want to be a mom and this is how I will, you know, kind of juggle that. Because nowhere in my little mind did, did it occur to me that motherhood would be this all-encompassing thing. Because you know how it is. It really consumes you, doesn't it? it? It requires so much of your time that there is just no space for anything else. And if on top of that, you don't have the right support, which most of us who are, immigrants for example living here far away from our our families our villages would would not have access to we wouldn't have access to the kind of support that is needed um so a lot of us will relate with you know <laughs> having to pick and choose things and just because the care the support isn't there and yeah i hope that with this podcast we're able to highlight some of those conversations and you know help other mothers and photographers feel like they're not alone. Um, we're all in this together. It's one of the things that um, drew me and Elsie um, together to become friends and accountability partners because not only was I chatting about photography to her, I was also chatting about motherhood and with ease and with knowing that she understood everything, every single thing that <laughs> was a challenge for me yeah if I said I can't take this job because of this I didn't have to explain myself Elsie understood (laughs) because she'd been there (laughs) and finishing each other's sentences without even realizing because I mean exactly we might be living separate (laughs) lives but as in the similarities with regards to particular situations is just too jarring to ignore and Yeah. yeah um oh by the way on the 19th of March here in the UK it's Mother's Day So we have a little challenge for you. Why don't you take a photograph of your mom? Or better yet, moms, why don't you let your kids take photographs of you and then share them on social media by tagging us using the hashtag photomamapodcast and we'll share those images on our Instagram and Twitter. So what are you waiting for? Get photographing. Personally, I found really hard to find people who inspired me like that because uh, I never found anyone who out there was outright saying I'm a mom and I'm a photographer it's the very I think one or two photographers who I identified with but they were so far ahead in their professions like I found myself like somewhat honestly intimidated even to like look at their work because I'm like they've already made it so to speak, quote unquote, they've made it, but I'm sure they'll, they'll come if they if they ever do come on this podcast, they'll say no, we have not made it. <laughs> I hope that they do, <laughs> yeah. Which I hope they do, yeah. Finding inspiration, especially with regards to photographers who are juggling motherhood and photography or being creatives, is I I can't. Have you found anyone? There are some that I would definitely want us to have conversations with. So I'm go- I'm not going to say any names yet. Um but yeah, definitely we we want um we're going to speak with people, mothers and photographers who are way ahead in their careers. Um and they're going to share with us hopefully how they've managed everything to inspire us. We'll also talk to people who are just starting out and kind of kind of get a sense of what what it is they're struggling with because it might be interesting to see how generations coming behind what what is it that what are their challenges and how are they different from what we have faced so we can kind of all pull together all these experiences and you know help each other feel supported of course the whole point of this is to like build a community that's what we are aiming for we want to build a community of moms as other genres have you know like there's just general groups of mothers like discussing all the challenges but we want 
a, commu a particular community of moms who are photographers, you know. And I know they're out there. There's so many people out there. It's only that they don't come out right and say, oh, I'm a mom and I'm yes. a photographer, which I've noticed, by the way. <laughs> yes, it's not fashionable, though, is it? It's not no, fashionable why? to say I'm a mom, I'm a photographer. And maybe it's, maybe it's getting better now. I do see a lot of mom of two or mom of three or whatever in their bios. But before, it was very difficult to identify a photographer who is also a mom because they would never, ever talk about the fact that they're a mom. You see them traveling, do National Geographic, this and that. And you're like, excuse you me. Um, so I always just assumed they're not moms. You can't be a mom mm. and traveling and doing all this wonderful work. <laughs> that's, because yeah. I can't see how so that's if possible. if you're one of those, <laughs> <laughs> if you're one of those moms, please, can you fill out the form or contact yes, us? Yes, please. And, please and come, come on the, and have... Come and have this conversation. <laughs> let's, let's have these conversations and inspire, inspire us. Help us to grow and, you know? and show us that it is possible because that's what it comes down to. This mm. idea that, oh, I don't think I, it's possible to do all of it, but it is possible. We can do it. Yeah. So help us. I know it's possible, but I think the whole like imposter syndrome, like most of us encounter, I think ours is on a different level. <laughs> <laughs> ours? Like me and you or <laughs> like... <laughs> no, as in, as in, when I say ours, I think... Moms. Moms, okay. Moms imposter syndrome. It like it's like on a different yeah. I, 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 you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think ours is on a different I, level I, I because think you're so thinking too. you're not yeah good enough, yeah. you know, to be out there. Or you you, you feel that whole mom guilt thing, yes. like oh I'm leaving my child yeah. or children or whatever or that, to go and do or that this people job. perceive Are they okay? you. Yeah, or that people perceive you as just a mom. But what does that mean, just a mom, you know? Mm. You know, there's so much, we're so much more than that, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> and I always joke to my kids, like, my first baby is my camera. They look at me like, what do you mean? Are we not? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Before you, there was you photography, know, okay? You know, they better recognize. <laughs> anyway. Oh, gosh. We've, um, I think this is going to be longer than we, we, we intended it to be, but I'm so glad that we've had this conversation. That is so true. But let me tell you, um, like, seeing that we are moms, we have to be realistic with this podcast. So we aim to release new episodes when time allows us. So please be patient with us uh, because, you know, life has a funny way of throwing these curve balls when you least expect it. So <laughs> being in line with that whole consistency vibe. So yeah. So yeah, please bear with us and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform and you will be notified when we release the episode. So I guess we'll have to end this episode here, Masi. Are you sad to go? I'm not sad because we have so much coming so much so if you're interested in joining the conversations we have a google form you can fill out in our show notes if where you're listening to this podcast does not support show notes you can find the form on our website www.photomamapodcast.com and as always if you have any questions you can email us at photomamapodcast at gmail.com you can also follow us on instagram twitter and youtube until next time see you later bye catch you later bye